Crindle Cracks, Chapter 22. Eleven years before, Winston had gone into the Dragon and the Golden Penny pub for a drink. He had just come home from work and was still wearing his uniform. He went to the bar, ordered a lemonade, the only drink he liked at the time, and sat by himself at a little round table in the corner. Winston had no friends in the street and always sat alone. In fact, most people thought he looked ridiculous in his baggy green uniform and dusty peak cap that wouldn't fit over the bush of his frizzy red hair. Now and again, Winston tried to start talking to someone, especially Mr Cave, whom Winston desperately wanted to be friends with. But no one took him seriously and always referred to him as Silly Splinter. That evening, when he went to the pub, most of Lizard Street was there. A younger Mr Lace, still wearing his green scarf and sucking pencils, a younger Mrs Walnut, still running a grocery shop and smelling of potatoes. A younger Dr Flowers, still with his pocket full of handkerchiefs and sneezing non-stop. A younger Mr Flick, still talking about films and wearing a green waistcoat with his big brass buttons. And of course, Mr and Mrs Cave, still short and fat and smoking cigars. The only people who weren't there when were Wendy, who was at home, Corky, who was at work, and Ruskin, Alvis and Sparky, who weren't even born yet. Dr Flowers was talking to Mrs Cave. You know, said Dr Flowers, you really must get a <gasps> tissue! A new sign painted for the pub. Ah, tissue! The one, the old one, is all faded and ugly now. That's what I've been saying, said Mrs Cave, puffing her cigar. Mrs Cave was expecting a baby and was even larger than usual. Mr Cave, said Mrs Cave, when are you going to buy a new pub sign? I don't need to buy a new pub sign, said Mrs Cave. Said Mr Cave, I'll paint one for myself. You can't paint the toffee, said Mrs Cave. Of course I can paint, said Mr Cave, puff puffing on his cigar so much he almost disappeared in the cloud of smoke. I can copy things, Mrs Cave. Well, in case you hadn't noticed, Mrs Cave, said sarcastically, you might be able to copy a few golden pennies, but dragons are pretty thin on the ground these days. Don't be awkward, Mrs Cave, said Mr Cave, puffing his cigar. Don't be stupid, Mr Cave, said Mrs Cave, puffing her cigar. The pub was so thick with the smoke from their cigars that everyone was coughing and spluttering. Mr Lace opened a window to clear the smoke and li a little and then said Why don't you choose something that bears some resemblance to a dragon and copy that? Like what? said Mrs Cave Well, Mr Lace said, sucking his pencil thoughtfully Like um, a crocodile That's a good idea, said Mr Flick I've seen films set in prehistoric times and the director has made crocodiles look like dinosaurs but where would you get a crocodile from? wondered Mrs Cave. And even if we could get one, wouldn't it be too big to get into the pub? Mr Flick frowned and thought. Mr Lace frowned and thought. Mrs Walnut frowned and thought. Mr. F Sorry, Dr Flowers frowned and thought. Mr and Mrs Cave frowned and thought. For a while, the pub was in silence, full of frowning and thinking. And then a squeaky whisper of a voice said, I can get you a crocodile. The voice came from the small red-haired zookeeper sitting by himself in the corner. Everyone stared at Winston Splinter. You can, said Mr Cave, picking some tobacco from his teeth. Oh, yes, Winston said. I work at the zoo, you see, and there's a crocodile there. It's only a baby, bright green and the size of a shoe. I could easily sneak it out for you. At least, I think I could. No, I'm sure I could. I'm positive I could. I'll put it in my pocket and you can have it for the whole night. Will that give you enough time to paint it for your sign? Mr Cave considered for a while, puffing his cigar, Finally, he replied, yes, yes, I'm sure that's enough time. Good, 
Winston said, getting to his feet and walking to the bar. Tomorrow night, do you? Perfect, Mr Cave explained. Let me get you a drink. Lemonade, please. That night, Winston went home and kissed Wendy on the cheek. I think I've made a friend, he said. <laughs>